In the previous tutorial, I introduced you to the concept of receiving an input from a push button and lighting up an LED accordingly. Here I have the same circuit for the push button with the push button connected to pin 8, and I brought digital 13 out to the breadboard to light up this LED here, since this LED on board is a little difficult to see. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of the interrupt. Now here we have the code for tutorial 13 where we read the push button and we react whenever the push button is actually clicked. But let's say we add a new component to our Arduino that requires some time to communicate to. I'm going to represent this time with a four second delay here. A little extreme, but it serves for the purposes of this tutorial. I'm going to give this code a save and call it tutorial four. Now if I upload this to the Arduino, and then I click the push button here, what we see is nothing happens. And again, nothing happens. But if I press and hold, eventually the LED lights up. And the reason for that is when this loop is happening, we check the button for just a moment, we then evaluate whether or not the button's been pressed, and then we go do this other function that takes four seconds. Well, if we're in the middle of waiting for this four seconds, and we click the button for just a split second, we're not going to register whether or not that button was clicked by the time we get back to this line of code. And this is why an interrupt is important. An interrupt interrupts what the program is doing, goes and does something else, and then resumes where it left off. To be able to take advantage of the interrupt functions on the Arduino, we're going to have to rebuild our circuit. Here's a pinout of the Arduino, and we see that our button is currently connected to pin 8. Well, down here we see interrupt 0 and interrupt 1. The UNO has two interrupts on it. We're going to be using interrupt 0, which is connected to digital 2. So we're going to have to rewire our circuit such that the button is now connected to digital 2. Once that's done, we're going to comment out in our setup here. We're going to comment out this line of code here, and we're going to write a new line called attach interrupt. And what this function accepts is three values. The first value is which interrupt are you connected to? And this is the interrupt number, not the digital number. So we're connected to interrupt zero. And then the second parameter that you have to put in is a function that is called upon uh, whenever the interrupt actually happens. In this case, I'm going to call it button func. And then we have to say whether or not it's looking for a rising edge or a falling edge. Since we have a pull down resistor here, we're going to be when we click, that's going to be a five volt signal, which means we're going to be seeing a rising edge instantaneously. Well, if we're going to have this function here called button func, we had to create that function. So void button func. And in this function, we're going to set our Boolean value button press to be true. Now down here in our main loop, we no longer are going to do a digital read on that because uh, to evaluate button press because we've already done it up here. And in our if statement here, we're going to change this such that we turn the LED on, we delay for that second, we will then digital write our LED pin to be low. And then we're going to reset that value of button press to be false. We no longer need the else here, so we can comment this out or delete it, it doesn't matter. And now otherwise, we are done. So let's give this a save and an upload. And if we think about it, what's going to happen is, is when we cl click the button, we are immediately going to go to button func, where we set button press to be true. And then regardless of whether or not we were stuck in the delay, the next time the loop loops around to this if statement, we're going to go through the if statement here. So let's try this out. We click the button, the LED comes on. We click the button, there's a delay, and then the LED comes on after several seconds. And the reason for that is we might have only been a half second into this delay of four seconds. After the final three and a half seconds finishes, we loop back, we know that our button press is true, and then we continue on with our code. So there you have it, a quick introduction to interrupts on the Arduino Uno. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.